What a freaking mess. On December 5th, author and YouTuber Jiren J. Zhao posted to the platform formerly known as Twitter, accusing an unnamed debut author of creating fake Goodreads accounts and one-star bombing fellow debuts. At the time, she was unwilling to out the person by name because the people who had been targeted were still behind the scenes trying to resolve the issue with the author privately. In that same thread, Jiren called out the author for pretending to be a victim of this targeted attack and brought up the fact that not only were many of the targeted debuts written by POC authors, but that the fake accounts used to review bomb them were created using names that would be interpreted by observers to be POC reviewers, as though that would somehow legitimize the reviews. So we've got some unhinged behavior by a debut author and a little weaponized racism. It's scandalous, sure, but it's probably not career-ending. Right or wrong, people have come back from worse. Even after Jiren's post, the victims of this review bombing were still trying to work with the person that they believed had done it to them, trying to get them to retract the reviews, trying to get them to remove the accounts, trying to get them to fix the damage that they had done. Meanwhile, the internet was out doing its thing and identified Kate Corain as the probable perpetrator. When confronted, rather than being an adult and saying something like, oh yeah, you know what, I am really insecure, I did a super shitty, stupid thing, and I'm really sorry, Kate Corain doubled down. They created another fake account and spoofed some Discord DMs between themselves and this supposed friend called Lily. Screenshots of this supposed conversation were DM'd to Jiren J. Zhao. The problem, of course, is that this conversation never happened. Even if the tone and manufactured dialogue didn't give it away, the fact that the timestamps warp back and forth between yesterday and today is a telltale sign that this was created in Photoshop. Still trying to cover her ass, Kate then posted to a Slack channel created for this debut author group who are all releasing in early 2024, still towing the line that all of this was perpetrated by someone else, this time using distancing language and claiming they weren't a bestie, just someone she thought she knew. Even though the entire premise of this Lily person was that it was someone that Kate had confided her insecurities to, her worries that her debut would not do as well as other books that were debuting at the same time. Kate then shared the screenshots of their conversation with Lily to the Slack channel, this time including even more of the villain arc clipped on at the end. We can only assume that as things had started to heat up, both on Twitter and in the Slack channel, that Kate started to realize that this was going to go well beyond them simply being insecure and trying to sabotage their fellow debuts, but that the racial targeting of other authors was going to play a more significant role. Unconvinced by these clearly manufactured screenshots, both Jiren J. Zhao and the Slack group started demanding evidence that Lily was a real person, links to Lily's social media or Discord accounts, any screenshots of chats that had existed before December 5th. Anything that would make Kate Corain's proposed scenario more believable. None of which they could provide, of course, because, as we've all figured out by now, Lily wasn't real. Now how much of all this Kate's agent and publishers were aware of at this point, we don't know. I've seen posts from at least one of the review bomb victims that Kate's agent advised them to stop talking to the group. Which isn't surprising. That's a pretty standard corporate response, but where was the PR team that should be in here doing damage control and protecting all of these people's investment? Like, sure, the book's not technically on shelves yet, but they were at the ARC stage. Artists have been paid, shipping's been paid, all of the editors have been paid, marketing has been funded. Basically, all that was left was a final cleanup round of edits that was identified during the ARC read and then printing. That's a lot of money and time and effort to just throw away. Where was her team in all of this? The answer is, we don't know. We'll probably never know. So while all of this is going on, there were accusations of ableism and reverse racism going on between a friend of Kate Corain's and one of the authors that have been targeted in this review bombing, none of which Kate Corain is directly responsible for, and while it does feed into the narrative of everything that has happened, I'm not going to include all the details of that here because it's not something that Kate Corain had direct impact or influence over so far as I can tell. Jiren J. Zhao and the author that was targeted in the review bombing and then later accused of ableism have already covered this pretty extensively and pretty thoroughly, so I will make sure that I include all of that information down below for those of you who are interested. 
As you can imagine, things started going downhill pretty fast from there. Still unable to back up any of their claims that this was perpetrated by a third party, Kate removed themselves from the Slack channel. Jiren lost her patience and tweeted out the screenshots that she had taken of all the Goodreads reviews dating back to April of 2023. Basically, at this point, there was no reason to try and continue offering Kate anonymity since she clearly had no interest in taking accountability, fixing her mistake, or offering any kind of apology. And people started coming out of the woodwork. Somebody who used to edit her work for about two years while she was writing fanfic, and people from a Raylo fandom that she was really heavily invested in. Old friends, old enemies, and this cadre of people from Kate Crane's past who were really familiar with her writing style started analyzing the conversation with Lily and also doing scrapes on their old fandom server because Lily supposedly was from the Raylo fandom. All of this was only adding to the mounting evidence that Lily was made up and that it was just Kate trying to cover their tracks. On December 11th, Kate's agent, Rebecca Potos, publicly announced that she was terminating her relationship with the author. A few hours later, Kate's UK publisher, Daphne Press, announced that they would be looking into the allegations, followed closely thereafter by their US publisher, Delray Books, posting that they were removing them from their 2024 publishing schedule. At this point, everything is in an uncontrollable spiral. Just after midnight, the morning of December 12th, Kate posted an apology to Twitter, citing depression, alcoholism, substance abuse, and new medications as the reason for their actions. They claim to have had a complete psychological breakdown on December 2nd, days before Jiren J. Zhao's post and presumably just after the other authors had reached out to them regarding the fake accounts. What this apology didn't address was the fact that they'd made the accounts in the first place, or that they'd intentionally targeted other debut authors to sabotage their careers in a bizarre attempt to bolster their own. Nor did they address what looks to be racially motivated targeting of certain authors within the pool of debuts. As you can imagine, the apology was not well received. A few hours later, both Daphne Press and Delray Books dropped Crown of Starlight and Kate Corain from their rosters. Kate also lost a deal with Illumicrate, who were scheduled to come out with a special edition book box for Crown of Starlight in May of 2024. Since that time, Kate Corain's social media has all been set to private or deleted entirely. They're supposed to be checking themselves into a psychiatric hospital, and if that's true, I'm glad. I hope they get the care that they need. The problem is, when somebody has made so many blatant, repeated attempts at misleading the public, it's kind of hard to determine what's real and what isn't. The authors that Kate targeted have already started to receive tremendous support from the public, people looking to offset what Kate has done to them. So if you're looking to do that too, I'll make sure that I post all of the screenshots that Sharon J. Zhao included in their documentation so that you can go and support those authors as well. That's basically all I have on this topic. I guess the moral of the story is don't let your jealousy take over. And if it does, don't lie to cover it up. It's 2023, y'all. Folks got receipts. You are going to make mistakes. In the modern era, anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of public opinion eventually. The trick is to own them. Don't lie to cover them up. Act like a goddamn grown up and maybe you won't wind up being the next Kate Corain. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And of course, if you like the way that I present information, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. You can find all of my social media contacts in the description. And of course, if you want to keep up with me and the progress I'm making on my current novel, you can do that at effiewritesbooks.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have an excellent day, and I'll see you next time.